Hi, it's Gerard here. Welcome to Learn Delphi. It is always a good idea to validate the values provided by users as input. It is especially important if those values must be used in the processing of your code or if it will make a difference in decision making. A common way to do input validation in a program is with if statements, where we evaluate the values in input components before we store them in variables or do processing with them. Let's try input validation with a small project. Like always, I already created the user interface to save time, so that you can focus on the code for this lesson. This is how the project must look when we are done. The application requires a name and an age. Today we will only do input validation on this form, but next time we will also show age categories, so we will create this application over two lessons. If you leave the name edit blank, the panel at the bottom must display a name is required in the red font and the focus must be returned to the edit. We typically show message boxes to notify a user about the mistake, but in our application we will use this panel. If you do enter the name and the age and click the button, the program must show the age in this panel with black font and the name must display in this panel also with black font. If you want to do the project with me, you will find the link in the description below this video that will take you to my Patreon page at patreon.com learndelphi. You will also find the link to Embargadero's download page, where you can download Delphi 10.3 Community Edition for free. That's what I'm using for these lessons. So pause the video here, go download the files and the software, and come back here to do the code with me. This is the starter project you can download. The user interface is already open in my Delphi IDE. If you are ready, let's first create a click event handler for the button. Double click the button, go above begin and type var and on the next line bteh as byte and one line down str name as string. The maximum property of the spin edit is 200. We will probably not find a person older than that to capture, so a byte variable will be good enough to store the age. STR name stores the name typed in the edit. The program must check that the user didn't leave the edit for the name blank, so we must first validate if there is text in the edit. We must often first do input validation before we continue with the rest of the code. Although if statements can validate the values provided by a user in input components, sometimes it is better to provide input components that force the user to input correct values. The spin edit is a good example of a component that does that. You cannot type non-numerical values like A, B, C or dates in a spin edit, so the value will always be a number. And even if you leave it blank, it defaults to a number. Combo boxes, list boxes, calendars, radio buttons and checkboxes are all components that can be used to avoid misspelling in inputs. But we can't force the user to spell his name in a specific way, or we can't list all the possible names and their different spellings in a list box or a combo box. For example, my name can be spelled Gerard with a D at the end, or like this, without an H, or I've seen it spelled like this many times, with a D and a T at the end. And some parents call their sons Gerrit, which is spelled like this. We will have thousands of names in a list that the user can choose from. And we may still have not covered them all, so we will allow the user some freedom with the spelling of the name. However, we can force a user to type at least something in the name edit. So we will use an if statement to make sure that the edit is not blank. Go under begin, type if, followed by a space, over type true with edit name dot text equals quote quote. Notice I type nothing between the two quotes. That is like saying if edit name dot text equals empty string then type begin on the next line, press enter, type this code between begin and end, pnlh category dot caption colon equals a name is required and end the line with a line terminator. On the next line type PNLH category dot font dot color colon equals CL red. And on the next line, edit name dot set focus. Press enter again and type exit. We will use this panel in the next lesson to also display age categories, but for now it must just tell the user that the name is required. Here we change the panel's font to red, and here we set the focus back to the edit 
because the button will have focus after it was clicked. And this exit procedure will exit the whole event handler. This will ensure that none of the code that we write further down executes while the if statement evaluates to true. In other words, while the edit is blank. I will take it out later to show you what happens without the exit procedure here. Let's first run the application. Click the button without typing a name. The panel shows the message in red. And the insertion point is back in the edit, so you can just start typing without setting focus back yourself. Now type your name and click the button. Everything stays the same because there isn't any code to do something after the if block. Close the form. If the user does type a name in this edit, we must ensure that the panel's font is black if it was changed to red. Go on the line after end, type PNLH category dot font dot color colon equals CL black. Here we make the panel's font black. Now let's give values to our variables. Go to the next line and type BTEH colon equals SEDH dot value. Here we read the value property in the spin edit and assign it to the byte variable called BTEH. On the next line type STR name colon equals EDT name dot text. We read the text property of the edit and assign the value to STR name. Press enter and type this statement. We read the value from BTEH that we got from the spin edit and first convert it to a string with the into string function. And then we assign the result to the caption of PNLH, which is this small panel on the form. Run the project. Click the button without typing a name. We get the error to notify the user that the name is required. Now type your name in the edit. Type your age in the spin edit. Click the button. Your age must now show in the small panel here. And the font of the panel must change to black. It will still display the error message because we didn't specify another message yet. Close the form. Now let's quickly see what happens if you remove the exit procedure here in the if block. Comment this line. Run the application again. Click the button without a name in the edit. We do get an error message and it was changed to red. But after that, the compiler executed the code after the if statement and changed it back to black. It happened so fast that we didn't see it change to red and then back to black. But we want it to stay red if the edit is blank. It changed back to a black font because we didn't exit the event handler. And that is because we removed the exit procedure from the if statement. Remove the slashes in the front of the exit procedure. This if statement checks for equality. It uses an equal sign to evaluate if the text in the edit matches an empty string. If so, it executes these statements and exits the whole event handler. So none of the code after the if statement will execute. That means the font will not change back to black. If a name is typed in the edit, this block will be ignored and the compiler continues with the rest of the code in the event handler. Go to a new line and type this code. Here we read the name from the edit that is now stored in the string variable named str name and we concatenate it to a literal string. Then we assign it all to the caption of PNLH category. Run the program. Type your name in the edit and type your age in the spin edit and click the button. Now the if statement evaluates to false and shows your name in black font. Close the form and save the program for the next lesson. Next time, we will explore more if statements with relational operators. If this lesson was helpful to you, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Happy coding and I'll see you next time.